Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube premiere for Thursday, February 3rd, 2022. I'm Lisa Brown, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in the United States. And I decided to go ahead and give uh, this premiere a try. Uh, still have a, some, a cough, so I'm going to try to keep that to a minimum. But wanted to come to you tonight and just share and uh, thank you if you're here watching the live premiere on Thursday evening, the 3rd. And if you're watching the replay, thanks so much. If you're live, go ahead and sign in to your Google account so we can participate in the live chat. I'd love to hear from you and where you're watching from. And when you leave a comment, I do a drawing to receive one of the projects that I make uh, tonight. And for the la two weeks ago, uh, Rita Horning is going to get this fun fold uh, rainbow of happiness card. So Rita, if you will message me your mailing address, I will get that sent right out to you. Okay, so uh, we're in February. Can you believe it? Um, and there is a new kit in town, the All Together Collection. And uh, I'm really excited about this because it comes at a very appropriate time. I really think the sentiment and the idea behind the set is wonderful and wanted to share it with you. And we're going to make a couple of cards tonight. Tried to keep it kind of simple so that I don't go too long and wear, wear my voice out, keep my voice. So this promotion is... Uh, available beginning February 1st through May the 2nd. Now, what I will say is there, is there are some items that will be carried over into the new annual catalog in May, but most of them will not. So as we go through, I'm going to point those out. So here is the flyer with some samples. And as usual, Stampin' Up! has the collection which is all the components that have been released that you can buy with just one item number. It's $105 here in the United States, so that means you can get two level one or one level two uh, celebration items if you purchase that. Also, if you decide to become part of my team and join Stampin' Up!, um, you can add this to your starter kit, okay? Um, so anyway, uh, and reach out to me if you're interested in that. So, we have a stamp set, some designer paper, some new blends, they're called the Natural Tones Blends, and some beautiful dies. So, let's take a look at those individually. I think I have two flyers here. Okay, so the stamp set has uh, these two images here and the heart so let me try to pull this up with along with some sentiments okay so you have i promise every act of kindness changes the world we'll get through this together you matter to me and love changes everything and this little heart hand symbol is something we do with our granddaughters all the time so that's really special to us i love it and this also will make a cute valentine card too so anyway i just love this every act of kindness changes the world so true okay so then we have here the dies that it cuts out here for you and you matter and there's a little heart and then the two dies that will cut the two hand images in the set. Now, these particular dies are only available while supplies last because of the shipping issue and the, the problem in getting more uh, product in in time for the uh, promotion. So once these dies are gone, that's it. And that means that you won't be able to buy it in a bundle. You won't be able to buy the collection. You'd have to buy the components separately. So if you're wanting this, don't wait, okay? Get it now. All right, we have the All Together Designer Paper Collection, and I, I'm gonna pull that out and show you some of the designs. I have a new pack here that we can look at, and you may have already seen it, but let's take a look at it. 
Now you see these hands on the front. Those make a really cute card. You cut it right in half at three and then trim it down some on the sides and you can make a really cute landscape card. I will say that when you color on the designer paper, um, it is prone to bleeding. It's not like our basic white. And so you need to not get so close to the edge when you're coloring the hands, okay? So there's that print and a very classic black and white on the other side and just these great prints here. So I'm gonna pull out one of each. I believe there are 12 designs and four of each. So here's some leaves. These could be colored too. Okay. And then we have this one, which is probably one of my favorites. And this can be cut three by three, and you can use this on a card. Uh, let's see what's next. Pulled out too many. This one here with the little pinky promise and some hearts on the back. We'll be using that print tonight. And let's see. This dot. And then that little cross hatch. Some more leaves. So you see how versatile that is? That's fun. That reminds me of that, what I see. I haven't started playing it yet. Wordle, I, I, don't get me into that. I don't, I don't have time for that. But I know a lot of you probably play it. Um, here's a little print here and another on the back. Um, let's see. This, we're using this print tonight. I love that. And then a nice fun stripe. And then I think there's one more. This one and that one. Okay, so you can see there's a wide variety and you can use it for just about any occasion. Black and white with a pop of color always works, right? <clears throat> okay, so now we've talked about the paper, the stamp set, the dies. Now let's take a look at the blends. The blends are a little different than the blends that Stampin' Up! has released in the past. They come and they're sold. You can buy the whole collection for $45, okay, all 10 of them, okay? Or you can buy the light, the medium light, the medium, the medium deep, or the deep. That's how they're categorizing the combos, okay? Um, but, you know, I can tell you that I can see where you would use all of these. They're great for first of all, for skin tones, so many different combinations, great. I love using it to do hair, different colors of hair. And also I've seen it used on just like vases and, you know, just 3D objects, just beautiful, beautiful. Anytime you could use a natural tone on something, they're just gorgeous. So I probably have them out of order here, but I will tell you that the darkest color is 100 and the lightest color is 1000. And so I probably just have uh, misplaced that one, but it should be here. This, no, that's 900. Where is it? 800. There's no telling, no telling. Probably stuck it in something else. I'm going to use 800 and 500 tonight, I believe. Let's see, let me get those out, 800 and 500. But uh, there are 10 of them. And like I said, there's an 1,000 somewhere and I'm probably just missing it. There it is. Yeah, here it is. My, my eyes, 1,000, see that light pink? So it goes from SU, 1,000, 900, 800, and that's how they're named. Okay, they don't have a name. And, you know, in the past, when we, you buy a combo, it's the light and dark of a color. Uh, for these particular blends, they're two different colors, okay? They're, it's not a light and dark. Uh, they're just, you know, categorized by shades. And uh, as I said, they're just beautiful. Now, we have a chart, and I'll be in to put this link on my blog where you can print this out. And I've seen this blending chart done different ways. 
my husband Jackie did this for me, and this is the way I wanted it done. I wanted to see the layering of the colors. Now you can see there's not a whole lot of difference when you get to the darks, but when you start shading, like, let me show you, I'm gonna use 800 and 500, and so this is the tone I wanted, okay? So I've seen them done. Let me just show you here on this, uh, use a scrap piece maybe <clears throat> I've seen it done where they take a color and it's like this in these little rectangles and then they overlap the other color a little bit like that and you can do that if you'd like but to me you're just still seeing the two separate colors this lighter shade right here in the middle is what the blend is okay so however you want to do that is fine i just wanted to layer top and bottom on all of the different colors and then i play with them as i go along so anyway i've been playing with it some i'm not super great at blending but i'm having fun learning and practicing okay so Let's get started with the first card. I'm going to grab my little tray. Uh, along with the Here Together set, I'm using the sentiment from Happy, Heart, Happy and Heartfelt. This is in the mini catalog. And let's see. I love you. This one, the I heart you is the one I'm using, the sentiment. Okay, and then I'm using these little heart hands. So... Let me get my paper out here and the ink. I tried to keep everything on a tray where I can keep track of it. So anyway, we just, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me, that's what I was gonna try not to do, but it just kind of hangs on, you know what I mean? <laughs> Doesn't wanna go away. But we did really well. We were good. All right. So, for this card, I'm using thick basic white, five and a half by eight and a half. And so I'm going to fold that, meet those corners, just do it as I go. Okay. That's a good thick card stock, so give it a good crease. It's gonna be a landscape card. Then I have a piece of real red, four by five and a quarter, okay? That's gonna layer here. Then I have a piece of this designer paper with that heart print. That is five by three and three quarters, and that's gonna layer on top of that, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, before I get too many pieces out here, I am going to go ahead and show you what I did with this particular piece. And I'm taking my dark, real red, and I'm doing random little hearts colored in the real red, okay? And I've seen this done with all different colors. They color fill in all of the hearts with like a trio of colors and it's gorgeous. So this just gives you the opportunity to just play around with it and uh, expand your creativity because, you know, any two of us can make a card the same, but same layout, same stamp set, but it really is, once you're done, it's your own work of heart, right? So I'm hoping to use this for a Valentine. So, getting this done. So I'm just, you know, kind of no rhyme or reason. Just, I don't want any two hearts too close together. I'm just scattering them. And I know I'm gonna have something across the middle. So I need to concentrate along the edges here. Okay. Love this paper. Okay, let's come down here and right in here. And notice I'm coloring with the bullet tip in these small areas. That makes it just a little bit easier. Okay, I'll do one more here. Okay, let's give that a go. How about that? 
Okay, now I have some more designer paper that I'm gonna use on this. And it is cut five by one and one half. And that is going to go across the center there, okay? So let me get my liquid glue and go ahead and put that down. So as I, this week, uh, United States is seeing some really cold temperatures in places that don't have a lot of cold temperatures throughout the year, through the winter. So, and then, you know, it's uh, Kristen, our oldest daughter, her birthday is Saturday and it never fails. This is usually the coldest week of the year. And if we're going to get snow here in Southeast Texas, it's usually within this one seven to 10 day period every, you know, not every year, because obviously we don't get snow every year here, but um, <clears throat> it's when it's gonna get cold. So we have a, our youngest daughter, her family are in Fort Worth and you know, they lost power last year and that was a scary situation. But my son-in-law is resourceful and took great care of his sweetie and those two precious girls. And uh, so they're ready, they're ready for it. You know, whatever happens, so. Uh, by the grace of God, everything was okay. Had a little bit of damage, but they're good. It's all fixed. So anyway, she sent me a picture the other day of Clara, the youngest granddaughter, and she, it, the t the caption was, ready for the snow. She had on this cute little snowsuit, uh, darling, uh, with some little snow boots. So she's ready. She's just, she was just two in uh, December. She's something else. She going, she gonna, she gonna make a name for herself in the world. All, all, well, you know, we all think our grandchildren are that way, but. <clears throat> okay, so what I did is I took some of this gingham ribbon that's carried over from the holiday. I love it, and it's perfect for this. Um, <clears throat> and tied a bow there. So if I were to guess how long I would need that, I know that when I'm cutting around for a landscape, it's usually 22, 20 to 24 inches, somewhere in there, depending on how much you need for your bow, you know. Okay, so there's that. Now we can get it on top here. I am so glad to be back and feeling better. That was just, whew. All right. All right, let me get this on here. And a lot, I have to remember, like when I do a layer and the ribbon is around that layer, man, I have to make special mental note to do that uh, or I forget. Okay, so there we have that. Now, the next part is I took a piece of basic black, about four by five, and I cut, cut one of these scallop, stitch scallops. What is this from? Oh, the scallop contours dies, okay? So got that, and that's gonna go here. And to go on top of that, I have a three and a quarter by one and seven eighths piece of this same print that's below on that strip. And so we're gonna glue that on top. I've learned to glue things down <laughs> once I get to them so that I don't lose them on my desk. Okay, let's put this here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this down too. And tuck it up close to that bow and try to center that a bit. If you need to move this over a little bit, sometimes you can tug on it a bit and it works. Okay, so see there? All right. And then I have a scrap that I'm going to stamp the I Heart You Sentiment. And I just decided I love this font in this set um, right here, Happy and Heartfelt. And these are great, no matter what, you matter to me. Just awesome. And so I'm gonna use that here. Did I ink that up? I'm talking too much. 
That may lead to trouble here in a minute if I don't watch it. Okay, I heart you. And then let's take our dark red Stampin' Blends again and color that heart. So what I'm gonna do here is get my paper snips and I'm just gonna cut out around this sentiment. So, let's see, here we go. It hasn't started raining here yet, but it's coming. Our um, place in Missouri is supposed to get uh, some snow. So I don't know if, I have one of my team members that lives near me up there and then, then a sideline, Karen and Diana. And I'm sure they'll let me know how it's going up there. Okay, this is going to go right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it down. And I really surprised myself. I didn't put any bling on this card. I just thought it was just sweet and simple with the king gingham bow. Okay, now let me show you my little hands and how I stamp and color those. And like I said, this is not my forte, the blending. I mean, I like to try it and I like to think, oh, that looks so good, <laughs> you know? But um, it does take some practice and, you know, Okay, so love that. Okay, so I have 500 and 800 here. After playing around, that's what I decided to go with. And I'm gonna take the brush tip of the darker one and go like where I think it would be darker, okay? So I'm gonna come here, kinda outline. So how about you guys, do y'all do y'all like to blend or is it more like, you know, I like to call it coloring book coloring because it's like, oh, just fill it in. I have too on many times uh, on projects I've been trying with these, I have just used the one color and shaded with like just going over it with uh, the same color to make it a little darker in areas. Okay, I'm gonna go there, dark there. Here. I don't know, y'all. I give it give it my best shot. Okay, here we go. So then I start circling around and blending in that darker shade. Okay. Okay, and then so see you can you can go over it with the same color but see that darker line there does give it some definition so give it a whirl okay okay now pull that color in that dark color, if you do circular motion, you're gonna get a little bit better blending, I find. Okay, see there? See how it's a little lighter there on the top? Not much, but I tried. Okay, all right. So then you would take your die and it fits perfectly there and you die cut that out okay so i'm going to save those and use them on another project <clears throat> and then i have these already done so i'm going to go ahead and glue those just like that And see on the back, you can see that dark line, but on the front, it's not as noticeable because of the blending. So I'm gonna say this, if I can do it a little bit, you can do it. <laughs> I love trying and playing with it. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm gonna take a piece of basic white for the inside. 
And, um, oh, I haven't even put it on the cards yet, Lisa. Like this. So it's going to have that white, white border around it. Okay. I can hear Jackie and my son-in-law out there laughing. All right. And then this is going to go right here. It just gives it, uh, to me, a little bit of a more finished look. And what I might do is uh, find a strip of that designer paper that I used on the front of the card and border it off. Might do a five and a quarter by one, maybe. Okay. All right. There's the first card. Okay. Sweet, isn't it? I think it's just so sweet. Okay. Let me... Um, Excuse me, move some of my things out of the way here now, and we're going to do a fun fold. Yeah, I didn't even tell you that. I should have told you at the beginning. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get these things out of the way. I need to invest in post-it notes. I use so many of them. Okay. So this can go here. All right. So now I'm using the same, the designer paper again, but I'm using Melon Mambo, okay? So use this stamp set. I'm gonna turn to my notes here so I get the, everything right. Okay. So now, let me pull out my, ink pads and my stamps. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Okay, we're starting with Mill and Mambo, five and a half by eight and a half. This is also going to be a landscape style card, but there is some cutting and scoring that we have to do to start with. And it is not hard. I mean, I made one or two, and you know, I kept myself a template for later and you just have to get it turned correctly and you need your trimmer, okay, with your scoring blade. So, five and a half by eight and a half, and we're gonna put the five and a half up at the top, and we're going to go over to one and one quarter of an inch, right there, okay? And we are going to cut first, so I'm gonna Come up here with the cutting blade. All right. So let me make sure I have this down. Right. Mm -hmm. These just two cuts, one and a quarter. And so we're going to go start at the one inch and go down to five and a quarter. Okay. So I'm going to move this blade down. It has a little tick mark on the side there. Okay that you can see that's exactly where the blade is. And so I'm gonna come down here and put it on the one. So you can see this white here. I put a piece of tear and tape underneath my uh, track, okay? Or my arm there. And I'm gonna line that up. You see that little divot there? Okay, line that up. Push it down, and then go down to five and a quarter, which is right, oh, gotta hold it, Lisa. Five and a quarter, that's close enough there. All right, then we're gonna go to four and a quarter, and do the same thing. Start at one, Get it set first and put it down, then go down to five and a quarter. Okay. All right, those are the two cuts we need. Now we're gonna do some scoring, okay? And we're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it with the eight and a half inch side at the top. We're gonna put the one inch, line it up with the one inch, okay? Then we're gonna use the scoring blade. So get that cutting blade out of the way. And we're going to go from the edge down to the cut line at the top. So that's from the edge 
down to the cut line right there. Then just slide it down. Don't push down because it won't so it won't score. Go from the cut line down to the edge. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and do the next one. Go to the two inch. And I can start at the bottom here. I'm going from the edge to the cut line. Slide it up. Cut line to the edge. Okay. All right. Then we're going to the five and one quarter inch mark. And we're going to do the same thing. Edge to the cut line. And then the cut line to the edge. All right. So now we have one more score to make. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to four and one quarter here. Slide it back over to four and a quarter. And then we're going to score between the two cut lines. Okay, so I'm gonna stand up so I can see better. There, there. Okay, so we have some cuts, two cuts, and several scores. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold on these now. Not that one, Lisa, here. This is up and down on these second ones. Okay, and then like that. Okay, so start on this end. Don't do as I do, not do as I say, not as I did. Okay, start folding over here. Fold, make a mountain, then a valley, and then a mountain, and then this one's gonna come up like that. And there we have our stair, center stair step fold. Okay, all right, all right, I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna get the other pieces and I'll have those measurements for you, okay? All right, so here we go. I've already done one and I'm gonna take my bone folder and give some good creases. Okay. See there? Okay, so now, <coughs> excuse me, let's look at our designer paper and other components. So I have a piece of four by two and three quarters of basic white, okay? That's going to go here on the inside, okay? So let's go ahead and finish that with some stamping. And I decided to use Every Act of Kindness Changes the World. All right, and so I'm gonna put this here and line that up on my grid sheet, and I'm gonna come down a little bit and stamp, okay? And then I have these little rays, sunshines, rays of sunshine, rays of light, Just inking that up in Melon Mambo, and gonna stamp right there, okay? Then I'm gonna take this little heart stamp and stamp that right there. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna put the ink up. And let's take this and we'll go ahead and glue it on the inside. So the fold, has anyone ever tried this fold? This was my first time to try this particular fold. Okay, I need to come down a little bit. That's a tad. So I give myself that border going around the edge, okay? All right, now. I have picked out another pattern and I picked out one in black and I have four pieces cut one by three and I need two of them for the inside and two of them are going to be for the outside. So let's go ahead and put those down right 
here and I'm just kind of lining it up with the bottom of the white. Okay, there we go. Now that inside's finished. Let's look at the outside. <clears throat> here are those other two pieces. Let's go ahead and put those down. So you kind of have to slide those in behind that fold a little bit. So I'm going to do this. And you do that, you judge it by coming down about an eighth of an inch from the top, okay? And let's do this side. Okay, that liquid glue gives you some wiggle room. Okay, so we've got all those four little pieces used. Now I have this little one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put that down. Decided to use a contrasting with the white here because my sentiment is going to be in white and I'm going to use the gingham ribbon down here. All right, next I have the two and three quarter by three of this little mini heart. So let's get those on, or that one on, I should say. Okay, and now I have a little die cut heart in Melon Mambo that I'm going to put out here. I've already done that. And then I've already die cut my sentiment, I'm having issues here, with You Matter. Okay, and I went back and forth on whether I wanted pink or white pink behind the white, and I, the white just really stood out to me. So I'm using a little bit of liquid glue here in the center, and then I'll come back and put some on the ends. And you could use our adhesive sheets here. I just forget to do it. I don't even think I have any here. You matter, and I'm just kind of, you know, not gluing it down because you want it to Stand, be able to stand up with that fold. So I'm going to lift this side, put a little glue. That's good. Let's see, and then I can lift, lift the M and put some underneath here. So do that middle first and then come back and add for the edges so that you don't accidentally glue it down to that. Okay, isn't that cute? Okay, and then I'm going to take the heart, and this is the card I'll be sending to someone. Okay, I'm going to have to be making some more of these folds. I want to get to where I don't have to look at my directions to do it, because it really is easy, and I was usually stand up to cut that or have my head right over it, but I didn't want to get my head in the camera, so... Get my cord out of the way here. <coughs> I'm going to use some of the, one of the iridescent rhinestones. Love these things. And then I'm going to get our ribbon. And I think I have just enough left on the spool to tie it around. Okay, and I ended up tying it in the middle. I liked how it, I usually offset the bow to one side, but this one was like, oh no, it needs to be in the middle. You see how it looks, pre that pretty gingham, how it looks good over that white, that white print. Okay, let me go ahead and tie this and then I'll cut it off. And I would cut, I would be generous if you're cutting your ribbon off 22 inches, maybe. It's always 
it's always better to have too much than to have to cut another whole long piece, right? That's a little big. Okay, I'm gonna, this is going just around this particular part. Let me give that a trim. And then, if I could find a glue dot, Mia's discovered that she loves glue dots, loves them. So, consequently, sometimes I have a hard time finding them. So that's okay. We'll put a glue dot here when we find them, okay? And that'll hold that bow down. And there is that card. See it from the top? And then here's the side view. Okay. And then from straight on. And what did I do with our other card? Here it is. Okay. All right. This, this is using the All Together Collection, which is available now. Um, very special collection of products. And remember that the stamp set and the dies and the paper will not be available after May, uh, May 2nd. And the dies, once they sell out, they won't be available at all. They won't get another shipment in. So if you're wanting those, be sure you take advantage of that. If I can help you with anything, let me know. Thank you so much for joining us for our premiere. I just love being here with you on Thursday evenings and I hope to see you again next week, but I'll let you know ahead of time if something comes up, and I'll talk to you again soon. Y'all have a great evening. Good night.